Welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to put a transmission mount in a Jeep CJ5. That was easy. Of course, that's not actually how it works. Uh, we do have to install one today. We've actually got two of them. These things are still cheap on CJs. They're like four or five bucks a piece. And it looked like there was possibly two different ones. So let's take a look and see what we have here. And what we're looking for is we are looking for the bolt holes to line up for mounting, which these apparently do. And we want the bolt holes to line up here. And they appear to be the same distance apart. I think those are pretty good. So what's the difference on these then? Well, I can tell you, just looking at them, this one looks to be much higher quality, just judging by how the rubber is formed on it. It's actually probably a quarter inch taller than this one. This one also, I can push that in with my thumb very, very easily. This one I cannot. So I think this is going to be the firmer of the two. This is the better product. Uh, and since what we're trying to get rid of is a possible clunk due to bad transmission mount hitting the cross member, uh, I think we need to go with the taller one. All right, let's slide underneath the Jeep and I'll show you what we got to do. All right, on your Jeep CJ5, just underneath the driver's feet, this is the transmission cross member slash skid plate of sorts. And these two bolts right here, that holds the transmission mount on. We're going to take those off. Then we're going to jack this thing up by the end of the transfer case here. And then we should be able to get to the bolts that are holding the rest of that mount onto the transmission. This is going to be one of the few times you're going to use a jack without jack stands because all the tires are staying on the ground. All we want to do is get right there to that transfer case and get this transmission moving in an upward direction. Just like that. Come on now. There we go, now it's lifting. Lifting, buffeting. Hopefully that gives us room to do what we gotta do without having to take that skid plate off. And right there in the middle, there it is. That's the transmission mount. I can't get to those mounting bolts. Still can't do it, not enough room. So. It appears we're going to have to remove this entire skid plate. Well, nice thing about this so far is everything is 9 16 Hey! Okay, well, this is going to be a good time to clean this skid plate while it's out. Probably take 50 pounds of weight off of this Jeep. And, as you can see, now we can get to that transmission mount. And it's going to be really, really simple. And most of our remaining time is going to be cleaning up this mess. Now, are these going to be 9 16 Oh, of course not. That'd be too easy. 5 8 Yep, 5 8 Oh, well, that's, uh, that's weird. That means that, um, something else not bolty, bolt bolted? Why? Well, this should not do that. Um, uh-huh. Sure. So what's actually holding it? Just one over here? Because this is just holding it to that piece. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going to take the other one out then. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay. I see what happened. This transmission mount mounts to this bracket, whatever this does. And this mounting hole goes right here, which is fine. And this one goes in here to this bracket to keep it from going back and forth like this, like this one was. So, when we put it back together, we're going to need to find another bolt to go right here. Also, this mount looks terrible. It's torn here, and it's torn here, and it's torn here, and it's sagged way down. So, uh, I think we're doing the right thing. Our new one is probably coming up on three-eighths of an inch taller. So, this thing is definitely going to be way better for our purposes. I mean, there's literal inches of gook on this. This thing does have a transfer case seal. It's leaking. Okay, it has multiple transfer case seals. They're okay, the entire transfer case is leaking, but I'm not going to worry about that. It does hold fluid up to a decent level still, so that's not my problem. Look at that. Approximately 10 hours later. Okay. That's just about as clean as that's going to get, ever. Not worried about this side. 
bottom. It's on the bottom. It doesn't even need paint. This, that, that's fine. I'm not scraping anymore. Got this mount cleaned up. We're not going to paint it. Looks like it's still in pretty good shape. Got most of the gook off of it. It's, it's, yeah, it's fine. Got one bolt in here. So this mount is on the bracket. And this is the other bolt that was in it. And I found a matching bolt that seems to be the same thread. So we can actually mount it to the transmission so this thing doesn't wiggle anymore. We'll solve both problems. Hopefully. I know you're going to be astounded when I tell you this, but uh, these go back in the same way they came out. Hey, that doesn't wiggle anymore. That that probably actually do something now. We should definitely we should rebuild this frame while we're here. We've got it apart. It would be silly not to rebuilt mounting surface. Rebuilt. I may have forgotten to mention this earlier, but this front bolt for the skid plate. Transmission mount is broken, and what somebody did was they used a piece of all thread. They're going through this side hole in the frame where the emergency brake goes through, and then they're using a nut to attach it. It's actually genius, and it works pretty well. It lets me hang a corner of this without having to tighten the bolt. There we go. The first one's in. Genius. We better resurface this too. Okay. We can finger tight one of these and get it started and work on the others. Now, before we go ahead and tighten these, what I want to do is I'm going to get our two bolts back into that transmission mount. So we need to lower this thing down and uh, drop those in. Then we'll tighten everything all together. And if you're wondering about the strange angle that that camera's at, uh, that's because my tripod just became a bipod very recently, as of about 10 seconds ago. So I got that going for me, which is nice. There we go. Uh-huh. Those threads might not have been right at the beginning, but they were at the end. Cross thread for the win. Now we're going to go ahead and tighten up our cross member. Could have sworn I had another one. Guess not. That's way better. Now, I didn't get a good before shot, but I could not get a finger in here before I replaced that transmission mount. Um, and I believe what was happening was the transfer case was hitting here. And you can actually see where this is bent down a little bit from it hitting, I believe, this bolt. And that was when you went forward. This bolt was hitting right here and bending that. And now I've got plenty of room because I have a good transmission mount. So maybe we'll have no clunk in first gear. Let's like I out. said, the issue we're trying to resolve is when I have it in first gear and I start to let the clutch out, I have an audible clunk. It doesn't happen in reverse, only happens in first, which is what makes me think it's a transmission mount. If it happened in first and reverse, I could see U-joint or pinion lash or backlash or something. But being only in first gear going forwards, my thought was engine torquing over and hitting metal. And that transmission mount was absolute garbage. And I really do think seeing the damage to the corner of that skid plate, right where that bolt is on the transfer case, I think that's the problem. All right, enough yapping. Let's start it and find out. Still runs good. First gear, please no clunk. No more clunk. That dragging noise, that's the, uh, the jack and the light I forgot to move. <laughs> 
but there's no clunk. I'll see you next time.